So first we're going to remove the screws underneath the synth. These are directly underneath between the alpha dial and the left hand controls. They should be pretty easy to remove. And then after that we'll move on to the sides. Then make sure we uh, unplug the power before getting started. Gently lift up the case. And there is all that analog goodness. There's the power supply. And then moving from right to left, we have the upper voice board. In this video, I'll be replacing the soundboard ROMs, as well as the firmware. And that chip with the two markings on it is the soundboard ROM that we'll be replacing. That's the upper layer, and now we're moving over to the lower layer, the lower synth. Right behind that bundle of cables is the soundboard ROM for the lower layer. Now that white ribbon cable in the middle, we will have to remove to install the SuperJX flash module. The firmware chip is underneath that cable. Here's the new chips we're going to install for the soundboard ROMs, labeled B and C. B goes on to the lower voice board, and C goes on to the upper voice board. So we're going to go ahead and install the soundboard ROM on the lower voice board first. We've got this IC remover tool here. I'm 
which we can use to grip the soundboard ROM and pull it out. I struggle quite a bit here as you're going to see. Probably not using proper technique or the tool is not the appropriate size for the job. So now it's time to put the new ROM in. And then I can tell right away that the pins aren't going to align without bending them first. So with this handy IC pin straightener tool, just place the chip inside and squeeze until the pins are straight and then they should line up nicely. Now I can push it straight into the socket, make sure it's secure and good to go. Moving on to the upper layer upper voice board. What just happened there is not good. You do not want one side to come out and the other side to stay in. Somebody's probably watching this and be like, you idiot, what the hell are you doing? I don't know, guys. I mean, this thing's sharp. And if you don't do it exactly right, you could fuck up your pins. I wasn't too happy about breaking a pin off that time. No harm done to anything else. Go ahead and straighten the pins on the new ROM again. Oh, much easier. You can just feel when it when it's seated. It's just everything feels solid and like it's just locked into place. And now moving on to the main flash module. We're gonna have to remove that ribbon cable gently. I found the best way to do it is to wiggle it side to side while pulling back very gently. And with the ribbon cable out, we can go ahead and remove the old firmware. There it is, again labeled with those two dots. Those two dots indicate the version. In my case, I had version 2.0 installed. This time I'm gonna use a small flathead screwdriver and gently pry out, not pry, but gently ease out the firmware IC.
I still bent a couple pins in the process, but nowhere near as bad as that second chip. And here's the Super JX Flash module. There's no need to use the pin straightener on this one. Just need to line up the pins with the socket. And push the chip into place. Once again, making sure that it's firmly seated. There it is installed. You can see behind it there's some small capacitors. I've read online that you may have to bend these capacitors out of the way. In my case, they weren't in the way. And even if they barely touch the module, uh, they're non-conductive, so you should be okay. I even emailed Fred Vikoven, the man himself, and he said uh, my install was just fine. I'm going to go ahead and replace the ribbon cable again, just wiggle it back and forth until it's firmly seated. Go ahead and close the lid. Plug the power back in. fired up. should see that we have firmware 3.22, and we do. And then lastly, make sure you clean up and put the screws back in. All right, here we go, moment of truth. Uh, the Coven firmware 3.22 installed in the Super JX10. And we've got hooked up via MIDI, the iPad Apple connect camera connection kit, USB to this uh, MeBlip Go, USB in and then DIN out. You got four outs, so we've got the DIN out going to the MIDI in on here. Okay, we go. Channel one. Roland. Super JX Vakoven 3.x. And let's do, we can do both parameters at once, both layers at once if we want. Why don't we do that? Low pass filter cut off both. Here we go. Okay, lower channel is two, upper channel is one. CC is off. Okay, we definitely need that to be on. Yep. Okay. Let's keep going. I haven't gone through these parameters yet. Okay, but we're not on the right channel. Okay, we gotta change the channel. Channel.
There it is. Awesome. So, it's changing both upper and lower. So we can make it change just one. We change the parameter. So what this was what LPF. This is LPF cut off bow, so we could just do lower. You can obviously hear that uh, it's just the lower that's being affected. Thank <laughs> you. 